is off to a great start uh, for your day. I hope that you've had a great uh, uh, point uh, up to this point in your week. I hope that you are committed uh, to seeing things through no matter what type of difficulty you may be facing or what type of challenges you have encountered. It's not about the circumvention of trials, struggles, difficulties. It's about perseverance. It's about seeing things through. It's about finishing. Uh, before I get started, I want to remind you, if you haven't taken advantage of the rapid change breakthrough offer that we're making, this is the final time that we'll ever offer this. This is an unbelievable value, a chance to work with yours truly one-on-one, -on -one, three powerful life-changing sessions. Sign up. Let's make it happen. Uh, if you haven't gotten book number 23, Merging Souls, Healing, Hope, and Restoration in Modern Marriage, click the link. Make that happen. If you're ever thinking about being in a serious, committed relationship, you want to read and, and understand the principles that are laid out in this book. Now, let's move on uh, today. Raising your standards to reach your goals. Uh, your goal should be to grow. Now, how you measure your growth is going to be up to you. There are a number of different ways to measure your growth, measure your growth in each and every area, but it has to be something that is measurable, but you have to be able to set goals. Well, one of the qualifications and one of the requirements of reaching a higher goal is raising your standards. Your standards are, the, uh, are set and must be seen as the level of tolerance that you're willing to encounter, endure, and accept in, uh, in the way of failure. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is this. You will only perform at the level of your uh, highest tolerance. So if you're willing to accept living check to check, that's what you're going to achieve. You have to change your standards. When you raise your standards, you raise your expectations. When you raise your expectations, you raise the way you view and see things. You, raise, you change the way you literally think and operate. You have to be able to raise your standards. And some of the things that you have to be willing to do in raising your standards, first and foremost, uh, I've listed some things out in the description box that you can check out. First of all, stop complaining about limited resources. There's no such thing as limited resources. When you talk to the people who truly get on in this world, when you talk to the people who actually make a difference in their lives and the lives of others, they don't complain about limited resources. Number one is they don't believe in limited resources. They believe that the resources are always there. I am a firm believer that whatever you need in this life to accomplish the things that you desire to accomplish, they are there. They may not be laid out in front of you in a nicely, neatly stacked pile or an easy push of the button of your phone to call a, t a connect with or directly in your particular bank account, but they're always there. I tell people all the time, you have an unbelievable abundance of resources beginning with your mind. Your mind is unlimited. Your beliefs that you have placed upon it. When you remove those limiting beliefs, you'll realize that every resource you need is right here. I tell people, while most people have always taught that your time is your most, most valuable asset, I say your time is your second most valuable asset. Well, what's the first? The first most valuable asset is your mind. When you can control your thinking and you can expand your thinking, you expand your capacity. Stop complaining about what you don't have. Start accessing and using what you do have. Start thinking. People who get on in this world wake up in the morning and go out and find the opportunities they need. When the opportunity doesn't present itself, they create one. It's that simple. There are absolutely no excuses. We don't make excuses. We make solutions. Number two, center your focus. You got to be careful of what, about what you're focusing on because what you focus on, you feel. If you're a person that po focuses on the problem, the problem is going to be monumental. It's going to be huge. It's going to seem unconquerable. You focus on solutions. You focus on the positive. You're not in denial. You just refuse to give power to the negative things in your life. The less power you give something, the smaller it becomes. 
Focus on the things that you can control. Focus on the things that you can look at and be thankful for. The more things you can focus on that you're thankful for, the greater the capacity for gratitude. The greater for the capacity for gratitude of gratitude for gratitude, the greater capacity for abundance. Gratitude is the gateway to abundance. You can't create abundance without first being grateful for what you already have. That's just simply how things work. Number three. 99% of the people in this world have been set up to fail. And you ask, how is that? We go through an academic process, the vast majority of us. Well, you are, are given a rating scale of A to F. And all you have to do is have a D or better to pass. So in most cases, your D is a 70. In some situations, it's 75. But wherever it is, it's 70 to 75%. You will pass you will have considered to successfully completed something. The problem is there's nowhere in life that you can give 70% or produce at 70% and succeed. Nowhere you can produce at 70% and get the optimal results that you're looking for. You have been set up to fail by a system that set up and and, and allow you to think you were passing, you were succeeding, you were winning because you had a 70 or a 75. No, you've got to be willing to look at everything and say, I'm giving it at least 100. And it's the people who find a way to get that other 10. They get to the 100 and they say, no, I'm going to find something that I didn't know I had in me. I'm going to find something that I didn't realize I was capable of. I'm going to bring it beyond this thing where it seems like I'm giving everything I have because there's something left. That's something for me to reach back for. And this is going to separate me from everyone else. If you want to do something special, you got, I mean, if you want to be someone special, you got to do special things. If you want to have the things that other people don't have, you have to be willing to do the things other people don't do you've got to reach inside and pull it out finally i want to get something home to you uh i'm not one uh to visit cemeteries um uh, I, I don't believe any of my loved ones are actually at the cemetery i believe that the energy of life uh continues on after the body dies and the energy of life is persistent and moving and so uh, but I do show respect in different times to visit uh, or, or when I re attend, which I rarely do funerals. I don't like doing funerals. Sometimes there's an obligation and we go, you go to the cemetery. And the thing that gets me is whether it's on the cemetery, whether it's on a program for a funeral, whether it's on a celebration of life flyer or whatever that you see online, there's this unique thing that always gets my attention. It's the two dates that make up the start of your life and the end of your life and then there's a dash in the middle most people focus on the birth date and the date that a person died they look at the dates i don't focus on the date i am enamored with the dash why because the dash represents what they did in their lives between the time they were born and the time they die what does your dash represent what will your dad right now my my start date is 1967 july 25th 1967 but the closing date hasn't been determined yet and so i'm still building on my dash but what will your dash be will it say it's will it show nothing but emptiness and 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 and, and, and fragmentation or will it show that you lived life that you lived life to the fullest that you embodied your purpose and that you moved about and you impacted the world what will your dash represent that's the question i'm going to add that's what i'm going to close out with here what will your dash represent you know hey the start is beautiful a bunch of people loved it. You came into the world and you, you, you became the gleam in your parents' eyes. And you did, you know, but what did you do between that time and the time that's coming? Where people will have to say so long and bye. Did you do enough? Does your dash represent enough power and impact that after the close date, people are still talking about, about you for years to come? What type of impact are you making? Make sure your dash is full of life and living. 
on that note i'm gonna get ready to get out of here don't forget to check out the additional resources in the box i would love to uh have you be a part of this last offering of the rapid change breakthrough program look i'm about to get off here as i always say i live my life on full so that i die on e i'm challenging you to do the same thing on that note i'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable day with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Jay, people talk Real about talk, it, I ain't throwing shots. all of the elements.